Hello everyone, I'm Lorene and I'm here with a Talking Hands video showing you how to make a chocolate sauerkraut cake. Now I'd like to say I'm the twisted person who came up with this idea but this cake has been around for many years, maybe dating back as early as the 1950s. And even though it sounds like a really strange concept, it's not as strange as you might think. So it's not unheard of to put vegetables in cake. We've got zucchini cake and carrot cake. And there's not that much difference between a cabbage and a carrot and a zucchini. They're all kind of, you know, similar in taste sort of profile. They're not too sharp. They're not too, uh, you know, startling in terms of their flavor profile. However, this isn't cabbage. This is sour cabbage. And so that may seem like the strange part, but in actuality, from a baking perspective, it being fermented and being sour is actually an aid for baking. So sauerkraut is an acid. If you put a pH paper in it, it would turn to about four on the pH scale. And mixing an acid in with your baking soda, baking powder, actually creates more leavening. So there's more value to sauerkraut than there would be just putting cabbage or carrot or zucchini into a cake. So what we're going to do, and the reason I wanted to show you this is it's so simple, and I've wanted to make this for years, and I, you know, just never got around to it, and I was really curious to see what it tastes like and what its texture was like, and I was really very surprised at how nice a cake it makes. So for our ingredients, we have half a cup of sauerkraut, and what I did was the recipe calls for a half a cup of water and I put a quarter of the water into the sauerkraut and put it in the food processor and munched up the, the sauerkraut so it's little tiny pieces and I have the rest of the water here. We have a quarter cup of cocoa, we have vanilla, we're going to use a half a teaspoon, we have a quarter cup of butter chopped into cubes, we have three quarters of a cup of sugar and you'll see that uh, there's two colors of sugar here this is organic sugar here and on top I have put sucanat so I sort of mix the two together and uh, this is sucanat in case you've never seen it uh, the reason I did that is I really like working with yellow sugar and I didn't have any yellow sugar so I thought mixing the two of these is kind of like yellow sugar because the sucanat has a really strong molasses flavor and of course the organic sugar has a very neutral flavor and so I'm figuring I'm sort of evening it out and getting somewhere in between. But it's your choice what uh, you choose to use. We're also going to use two eggs Oops, that I like to roll and we have a cup of white flour with half a teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of baking powder, and a quarter teaspoon of sea salt. And if you're wondering why I'm using white flour, I felt that since you and me, when I originally did it, don't know what this tastes like, I didn't want to complicate it with whole grain flour, which might make it not taste as ideal as it could from a, what you might expect a chocolate cake to taste like. So I thought, you know what, I can always add whole grain at a later date, but at least I'm going to find out what the sauerkraut does to the chocolate cake. All right, so now, uh, if you want the full recipe, it is on my Pastry Queen Goes Green uh, website, and I put a link below for you to click on to take you directly to the rest recipe. But I'll just review the ingredients. We've got a quarter cup of butter. We've got three quarters of a cup of sugar. We've got two eggs. We have half a teaspoon of vanilla. One cup of, I'm using all-purpose unbleached flour. Half a teaspoon of baking soda half a teaspoon of baking powder, an eighth of a teaspoon sea salt, a quarter cup of cocoa, and please note the richness of the color. I'm using 22-24 cocoa, which you should look for in your, I, I get this at the bulk barn, I also have seen it in health food stores. The regular cocoa is called 1012 and it's much paler and not nearly as rich in flavor and color. And we have half a cup of sauerkraut and half a cup of water. So this is really easy. The first thing we're going to do is add butter and sugar. And if your butter is hard, this is a great way to get it to soften is to mix it in with the sugar. 
So we're just going to cream this. Okay, so I cheated there and turned off the camera so you didn't have to watch the mixer spinning because that actually is the most time consuming part of this. So I just want to show that we have this now down to a nice mush. And if you don't have a mixer like this that can break up the butter with the sugar, then what you want to do is soften the butter at room temperature first uh, and then any mixer will work with this. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're going to add our eggs. And we're going to add the vanilla. And we're just gonna mix that. And it doesn't have to mix in that well. It's not really important. This isn't a very technical cake. Just make sure you scrape the uh, butter off the sides because you want to make sure everything's incorporated in. Okay, so now we're going to add our cocoa to our flour, just gently mix it in there. Doesn't have to be too, doesn't have to be mixed well. Okay, and then we're going to dump this in. And give this a little mix. And the reason we don't have the sauerkraut in or the water is we want to make sure we get the, that the batter is stiff enough that we can make sure there's no flour lumps. So I'm just going to add a bit of the water. I don't want it to be too stiff. I'll add the rest of the water. And I will scrape the sides again. I'm a big fan of scraping the sides. in the sauerkraut. And that's all there is to it. thing to do is just to put it into a pan and what I'm using is an 8 inch square pan. Uh, you could double this recipe, you could make two layers, you could do like an 8 inch round, you could turn it into a layer cake if you like, but I'm just trying to keep this simple for people. I just want to do something quick and easy and when, you show you, when I show you how I'm going to finish it with a chocolate glaze, you're going to see how easy that is. So I basically greased a pan and lined it with parchment as you can see. Um, I'm just going to take this off, scrape it in, put it all in there. Okay, so I'm just going to spread this, spread this evenly so you can see the nice texture. 
and I'm going to put this in the oven at 325 for about 30 to 35 minutes. The reason I'm putting it in at 325 is I find that a lower temperature actually helps it lift better because you're not forming a, a, a crunchy crust on top really fast and it allows all the leavening to come up underneath and uh, it's just a nicer texture. All right, we will be back in 30 to 35 minutes. So this is sat for about five minutes and now what I'm going to do is take a flat knife and go around the edges and then I'm going to lift up so that I know that the cake is coming out. Then I'm going to put a wire rack on top, flip it over like this, and there's my cake out of the pan. Now I'm leaving it flipped upside down because this will flatten the top and I'm going to pull off the parchment paper and we are going to let this cool until uh, it has, has no warmth to it whatsoever and then we can glaze it and serve it. We are now ready to make the chocolate glaze that goes with our cake. So the first thing we're going to do is heat the cream with butter and then we're going to pour it onto the chocolate. So I have about a cup of chocolate chips here. These are semi-sweet Belgian chocolate chips. If you wanted um, one with a higher cocoa solid content, if you wanted to use a 70% cocoa solid chocolate bar, you would just uh, take that chocolate bar, chop it up into small pieces like a chip, and then me measure out a cup. Now the thing is, I'm using whipping cream right here, and you can use other things. You can use coconut milk, you can use uh, rice milk, I've even done it with that. Uh, so if you don't want to use whipping cream, you don't have to, but the more runny it is, the less fat that is in the liquid, the less you use, right? Because you have to get this to a certain thickness for it to work. And so right now we've got twice as much chocolate as we have cream. And the full fat coconut milk would be about the same. But if you were to use light coconut milk or you were to use regular milk, uh, you would use probably maybe half that amount. And that may not be enough to melt the chocolate because what we're doing here is we're putting the butter and the cream in the pot to melt, to heat, and then the heat from that when we pour it on the chocolate melts the chocolate. And this is really fast and easy this way. So just something to think about. Okay, so we're going to start our burner here. And this will not take very long. Well, there goes the butter. And again, we're just going to bring this to a boil. And if you stir too much, you cool it down. So you just want to leave it alone after you sort of get the butter going. And it doesn't take very long. I do this usually on high heat. If you have a smaller pot and you have more cream, you have to be careful because if it starts to boil and you're not paying attention, it'll boil over. But as you can see, it's already starting to bubble right here. I'll just move that butter in there because we want to get that melted. There we go, it is bubbling and boiling, so we're just going to pause that, take this off the heat, pour it onto our chocolate, and we're not going to stir it right away, we're going to make sure all the chocolate is submerged, and we're just going to let it sit for a few minutes, it doesn't take long. And move the chocolate around a bit if you like. You can see it's already melting. But again, if you stir it too soon, 
especially if you've had to use less because you were using um, uh, a milk or something like that that doesn't have as much fat as the whipping cream, um, you might not get the chocolate melted and then it's a real pain because then you have to stick it on a double boiler and heat it up and it's really annoying. So it's better just to let it sit so that it can melt and you can always just, you know, push it to see how it's doing. And you can see I'm not getting, not really getting any hard bits right now. So I'll start to gently stir it. It's not quite ready. Just let it sit there for two seconds. And again, if you had something else to do, you could be doing that while you're doing this. It's still going to be fairly hot and we're going to want to let it cool even a little bit more once it's all mixed uh, so that we get the best control possible when we're trying to drizzle this on the cake and to get a certain level of thickness on the cake itself. Now if you froze the cake, um, it would set really fast and you could really control the thickness of the glaze but then it's not ready to eat. So it's better to let this cool enough so that when you are ready to drizzle it on the cake, you're just cutting the pieces of the cake, drizzling it on, and then you're serving. All right, now we can give it a stir. Ooh, look at that. Now, this is a really great glaze, and this is the beauty of chocolate. And can you do this with white chocolate? Yes, you can, but it doesn't have as hard a setting property, and it doesn't work quite as well. You have to use much, much less liquid, and sometimes you just don't get something as nice as this. Okay, so look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so this glaze can obviously be used as a liquid and poured on. But you can also let this come to room temperature and you can actually ice and pipe with it too. So it's pretty versatile and um, it makes a really nice covering for desserts where you don't have to worry too much about the sugar content. Um, I used a semi-sweet here so it's not that sweet. As I said, you could use a 70% cocoa solid and have it even less sweet. Or you could use an 85% cocoa solid and maybe that's not sweet enough for you and then you could add your own sweetener in, um, but you could control the quality of the sweetener. So you could add coconut sweetener or you could add um, honey or maple syrup or something like that. So it's very versatile, but as you can see, it's made in minutes. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get our cake ready to glaze and then we're going to glaze it. Okay, here we go. We're going to now glaze the cake. So the first thing we're going to do is flip this upside right. And now, since it's cold, see how you can hold it on your hand? It's very easy to transfer. And we're just going to put it on our cutting board. And then what we want to do is cut it into pieces. So we're just going to, with a saw knife, because you cut cakes with a saw knife, and then we will cut each one of these in three. So we're actually getting nine portions. And you can see how moist that is. Look how moist that is. Oh, lovely. Okay. And then what we're going to do is cake over there and we're going to put a piece of cake on a plate and I bought a paper piping bag and I did uh, make a video showing you how to uh, fold one of these if you want to do this if you don't then if you have a nice little creamer like this you can pour it in there and then place it like that we'll use this so we're just going to you can see how it's thickening up so it's a good it's going to coat well it's not too runny and 
Okay, so we're going to fold all that in. And now we're just going to drizzle it on the cake. And you can put it on fairly thick like that. And then to get it to a little more decorative, you can squirt a little more over on some of the side of the plate. And that's ready to serve. If you want to put some berries around it or serve it with some ice cream, you can do that as well. It doesn't really matter. It's up to you. You can see this is now dripping over the side. That's going to be very nice. And it's just a nice chocolate, moist, delicious dessert. Now, for those of you who are wondering about the good bacteria content of the mixture, um, well, obviously the sauerkraut bacteria was killed when it was put in the oven, so it doesn't exist anymore. Uh, but what is still present in here, because there's sauerkraut in there, is the phytonutrients that have become more bioavailable. Uh, the uh, fiber is there. The uh, vitamins and minerals are also more bioavailable. So you are benefiting from the fact that the cabbage was fermented. I mentioned earlier the fermenting makes it an acid, which helps the baking process. You can see how nice and fluffy that is. Um, and, but you also are benefiting from a nutritional level for having the sauerkraut in there. And the nice thing is you don't taste the cabbage. All you taste is moist chocolate cake. So I hope you like this uh, idea and you want to give it a try. Uh, if you're a chocolate lover, I'm sure you'll enjoy this.